building a team. Building a team is not easy. Don't let them fool you <laughs> into thinking it is. But the benefits of building a team and having the patience and taking the time to give them what they need to develop and grow into what you envision them to be uh, is super, super valuable. And when you see it occurring uh, on in your company or agency or whatever, uh, it is a very satisfying feeling. <laughs> so in these videos, I always like to talk about things in my recent history and what I've been doing and uh, things I can share with you that we can maybe learn from. And I think this is definitely going to be one of those. So uh, in a recent video, actually, I talked about a team that I have that's more on the market marketing side of what we do. So we're uh, doing some outbound stuff, outreach, outreach stuff. Um, and I had hired another person to uh, help with that. But I already have a marketing person. She's been with me for a couple of years and helps them with content and all kinds of stuff, and direct email and all this stuff. And I had learned that she was using some tools I didn't even know she was using uh, to make herself more efficient and do, do a better job. Um, and that was amazing. It was just one of those moments just like, oh my gosh. You know, she took initiative, she went out, she found these things to uh, help her do what she needed to do and what I needed her to do uh, without even telling me, just doing it, taking the initiative. And that is something uh, just yesterday, actually, um, it just really, really uh, sunk in with another one of my hires, uh, this past year. Um, I, if you follow me for any length of time, probably most of you don't, uh, but <laughs> if you follow me, um, I hired a project manager last year uh, to help me coordinate projects and tasks and assign things and track things and just take care of some of my clients. And so I can go off and take care of other clients and do other things and all the other hats that I wear. Uh, but somebody really, really helped me out. And like a lot of things, and this is not, this is actually true in other roles as well, even developers. Um, sometimes, you know, in the beginning, Getting someone started, even if you have an onboarding process, sometimes it takes a little while for that person to really understand and onboard themselves what's going on. <laughs> and we do a lot of stuff. And I'm not just saying that. We <laughs> have stuff coming flying at us from many different directions. We have uh, multiple partners, uh, agency partners. We have clients, uh, direct clients. We have a lot of stuff coming at us constantly. Um, new people coming on board, new projects coming on board, things being done, all this stuff is happening. So when I first brought her on, it was a little overwhelming for her, I know. Uh, and, she, you know, sometimes it's just uh, kind of a, almost a culture shock in a way, like from you go from one company to another that do things differently. Um, and uh, that we had to work through, right? And it took time. It took patience. But like other uh, roles, as I was saying, you know, with de de uh, developers or whatever, sometimes that too. Sometimes it takes a while to figure out how to, you communicate together, how you work together. Um, you know, I, I have a developer for a while. We had some rough patches where it was like, I just, I don't know. <laughs> I had to move them around and, and, and different kind of tweak the role. And it took me a long time, but now they've become one of my most valuable players <laughs> on the team. And it's the same for the pro my project manager, Donna. Uh, Donna's doing an awesome job right now, but it, it took a while to kind of develop that. And, and part of that was us too. This is a new role. And so we're kind of developing it on the fly. And so I had to test a lot of things and finally get to uh, where we needed to be. Now, the thing about that, when you hire somebody, sometimes you're like, oh, I just, you have this vision for it and you just hope they can just slot in and just take care of everything and you don't have to do anything. But it's actually a lot of work. When you first hire somebody, uh, you have to invest more time up front to that person. You have to invest your time. You have to give them every, the resources, training, everything they need to, to do their thing. And it, it was the same in this case. And, uh, but as time goes on, they get better. They start getting it. They start, you know, um, and I was helping them uh, in every way possible to try to give them the, a situation, a setup that they could work in and, and, and stuff like that. 
uh, just to make their job more efficient or them to not get confused. Uh, so that meant, uh, you know, working on our tool set, you know, what tools we use to manage projects and, and what our communication channels are and how that's all going to operate, who they're taking care of. And then they have to learn, like they, have, like she has to learn like about our clients. Like, uh, so there's a, for each client, there's a learning curve, like to learn about their projects their websites or, you know, how, who were, you know, to, they have to build a relationship with the people in, in, they have to build relationships with the client or who's working for the client, you know, marketing people or, or other agencies. So all that has to happen. And the thing about it though, is if you invest that time, like I said, you can have, you can have the onboarding, you can have it pretty structured, especially in the beginning, just getting them in. But if you take the time and invest that time, uh, you will be amazed because what can happen like I said, I have this, uh, the, the MVP player, <laughs> most valuable player, the MVP, the MVP, that would be the most valuable player, player, MVP player. Uh, <laughs> you have, you, if you work hard enough on somebody, and this is very true, but it's probably true for any employee, but, you know, international too. Like I have a lot of international um, employees and contractors that help us and stuff like that. Um, but if you give them the tools, you give them the time, you give them the resources and you have patience, they can turn into a very valuable asset for you and for your company and they can get better and they can get, it can just start to click for them as well. Um, it's going to be stressful for them in the beginning, uh, as they're got so much to learn and, and figure out. And, but as time goes on, it can improve. And what I'm getting to here is I had uh, yesterday, I was just, I was going through, so every day I have, I, I still go through all of our projects. I go to Trello and I use the Trello kind of different views and stuff to see what's going on. We have like a couple dozen boards in there and we have a lot going on, but um, I have ways to kind of look at everything and, and check in on things and make sure everyone's got what they need make sure I need, don't need to assign things to them and all that stuff. So I'm doing my thing in there and I ran across a couple boards and I didn't even know what the, or a couple boards, a couple tasks um, on our maintenance board that I wasn't even, I didn't even know existed. Right. And there's a couple tasks going that, um, we're improving things for our clients. Uh, one was related to some, uh, errors, console errors, uh, on one of our sites. And she had gone in and created a ticket and assigned it to one of our developers and they're working on it. And it was, it was also uh, some other internal stuff. Uh, she has something going where she's helping clean up some things in uh, our C panels and stuff and um, our staging sites. She's taking initiative. Um, I might offhand say some of those things or check that or do that. You know, like I kind of, we're keeping an eye on things. We know what we need to do. Or I might say, I think in the, um, in the context of like the C panels and all that, I think I mentioned I wanted to help you know, kind of free up some space in there because there's a lot of things can collect in in your staging sites and C panels and all this stuff over time. She's taken initiative and done that. And I, I think that just for me, just made me smile. It made me feel good. Um, again, I talk about all the things she has had to learn. One of those things is how to work with our team, with the full team. You know, it's, it's a little scary at first when you don't know the team, you don't know your developers, you don't know... Um, uh, you know, you've, this is, you're brand new and you get all these established people. And so you, they're, you're bringing in all of a sudden, you're going to be giving them things and managing them, you know, their projects and stuff. Um, I see her now she's working with her developers or she brings in my designer to help her design a little something. Um, that's all happening without me even having to worry about it. Just like I was talking about my marketing team where they're using tools, they're going out and finding those tools and figuring out how to get it done. See, I'm not, I don't, I don't pride myself at all as a micromanager because I don't need to, because I'm not, um, I, on some level, like I will look at details, but sweep through and look at details, right? I'm, I do come in and periodically randomly look at stuff and see how things are going. I might even comment on something where there's a task going. I might just look in it, see how it's going. And then I might even comment, say, you know what? Um, if, if I see something that I think could help. I drop in a note or whatever. 
I do that. But overall, though, I'm not watching every single detail of my business. And that's a beautiful place to be. And that's what having a team is all about. It's about bringing them on board, you know, finding the right roles, you know, and sometimes it takes a while to find the role. Like you have to, especially when you're creating a role, it takes time to develop that role or to figure out exactly what that particular unique person uh, is suited for and uh, or how to you know, as as the leader, as the person that is guiding our team, uh, I have to f- always be looking at that. Like, how can I help them do better at what they do? What do they need? How do they like to communicate and all this stuff? But like I said, it's, it's a beautiful thing, though, when you put in that time. Don't like if you're hiring a team or you're thinking about hiring a team, um, understand that it's not just about hiring. You, you got to go through the process of hiring, right? Hiring is work. <laughs> and, and if you don't have somebody dedicated to it, so I'm in a position where I have a smallish agency, right? Um, we're growing. We're large. I feel like we're <laughs> getting larger just because all the stuff I'm managing, but I'm still the management team, right? Um, I have my little mini managers and helping me out with stuff and all that, but I don't have like I don't have a dedicated like HR department or a dedicated uh, uh, person to hire or do sales and all that stuff. Um, I'm doing a lot of that yet. And hiring is one of those things. So if you are going to start to hire, even to get to that point I was just talking about, I, I'm going to have to invest the time, as you would. And you have to invest the time up front to find that person, to hunt for them, and to hire them, then to train them and onboard them. And then to main, you know, to, it takes, it might take months. It might take a year to finally get that person to where they need to be. But when you do and you start seeing things like this, it's a very, very great feeling. And uh, you know that now you're positioned when, when you have people on your team that are taking initiative and taking ownership of what they're doing and care about it. That's that should be your goal. <laughs> that's where you want to be. All right. Until next time. Take care.